Hello and welcome to another episode of Wiggy Shop. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about inverters. I picked up this inverter about a year ago and I specifically bought it for a project where I was trying to analyze a moving vehicle. Uh, we were having an issue that the start signal needed to activate some equipment that was installed and probably about every 50 to 100 starts it just wouldn't work and what I was doing is taking this inverter and I was running it off of the truck battery and then I was powering a data acquisition system and also an oscilloscope so that when it would glitch we could see if we were getting a bad signal and we could see under what conditions it was glitching now this all sounded good and I knew that I needed a pure sine wave inverter which it clearly was sold to me as one. So, being the first time I really played with a whole lot of inverters with oscilloscopes, I thought I'd be smart. And what I did is, when I first got it, I did a test just like this, where I took and plugged something in and just simply put a probe from the oscilloscope on the power and ground. And what I have over here is just a battery, my power supply, and some capacitors so that if I load this it doesn't change anything. And I'm going to take and turn on the inverter. You can see we're holding steady at 14.6 volts so it'd be a hair lower in the truck but right around the same thing. And I checked the signal on the oscilloscope. And it is a nice sine wave. I didn't see any issues with it whatsoever. So I went and hooked it all up and started doing my testing. <clears throat> and after running it, f this vehicle for probably six or seven hours, I got a glitch. And when I got the glitch, I found all this noise on, this, on the truck electrical system and started chasing down what was causing the noise, how to address it. And what I had failed to do is look at what my inverter was actually doing. Right now I have another channel on the power and ground, the 12 volts, or in this case it's at 14.6, that's actually feeding this and it's hooked to channel 1. When I turn it on you can see all of this noise coming across. And if I AC couple the channel You can see it's coming through at the same frequency that the AC is being output, but I'm actually getting almost a volt and a half, two volts of noise steady across. So it actually was creating its own noise from the inverter I was using. So after chasing my tail for a long time, I figured out that this was happening and maybe this inverter would work great if you weren't trying to read the signal with an oscilloscope that's powering it. But what I have is a new inverter and I want to see if it causes the same problem. So this is my new much more expensive inverter and I've got my probes hooked up the same. The only difference is I got them back here on the capacitor just because it's harder to probe these larger connections. And I definitely see a small ripple coming across, but it's 
120 millivolts to 200 millivolts. So it will affect the DC source that's powering it, even with this one. But you can see the difference between an expensive and cheap inverter. I made the mistake of thinking that as long as it was a pure sine wave and I was under the wattage requirements that I was good to go. And anyone who is looking to actually try to do any analyzing of the DC signal under test, uh, just be real careful because the cheap ones apparently have some issues. But Hopefully you found this interesting and learned something about different inverters and things to watch out for. One more quick thing that I should add, in case anyone was looking at these wires, this is all unfused. This is just for me testing something on the bench. If you're playing with inverters, please, please understand how to fuse and wire things correctly so that it's safe. Something like this could never be installed safely really in any application um, for this size inverter. So, be safe and thanks for watching.